The goal we have here is to send WhatsApp message to any phone number in the world without using the phone or internet. And you will understand the reason for me doing it if you ever had a boyfriend or girlfriend because it's an unofficial rule to send good morning honey, have a sweet dream, I love you, I miss you, I can't take shower without you, all these messages every single day. And if you have a very romantic relationship, you will know the pain of missing a good morning message one single day. So without a further ado, let's get started. To do this, I will definitely need Python installed in my machine. I will use Visual Studio Code as my code editor. If you have any other code editor, feel free to use that one. I will need few tools to make it easier. Definitely the peep would be the first one to use different Python packages, a common line terminal. I will need Git for my source control. I will need a scheduler to schedule the task so that a message could be sent a certain time in the morning, like in the 8 a.m. in the morning or 10 p.m. at night, or maybe after every 30 minutes if you are a crazy lover. Eventually, I will use Heroku to host the service so that I don't need to touch computer or mobile to send those messages. Heroku can do it automatically for free. And the last and most important part is you need a boyfriend or girlfriend to send the messages. Because if you don't have one to whom you will send the messages. But don't worry, if you don't have any girlfriend or boyfriend, I know that Ariana Grande is single right now. So you can take a chance there. Let's start with the projects. The first thing I have is in my projects folder, which is currently empty. And uh, I also have the my terminal, which is pointing to the same folder. And I will create a brand new folder for this. So I will make it as a, like a love automation because we want to make love more automatic here, I guess. So, and I will CD to this uh, love automation. I will open this in our code editor. I will be using Visual Studio Code. From now on, I will be using the Visual Studio built-in terminal for most of the command from here. The very first thing I will do is to create a Python file. And to do that, I will type uh, name it as a, like a honey and love dot pi and we will open this uh, honey love pi so we'll have this here and just to be in the safe side we will write a simple python command and uh, to like love you baby or whatever you want to write and then we want to make sure this is running properly so we'll run this visual studio extension and we will have this output as a like a love you baby that means our python thing is working the very first thing you will need is to find out this awesome framework that will make your life much easier to automate sending messages. And Twilio has this. So you have to create a account in the Twilio website. I already created one and then you need to uh, verify their email address and all this stuff. So I already did that. And after you log in to this account, you would be taken to their dashboard. Once you log in, you will see in their dashboard and if you have any other projects, you will see here. But our intention is to look into this guy. It's called programmable SMS. So I clicked on this and then you will see like a few options for automate. Our goal is to look into the WhatsApp. So I will click on the WhatsApp thing. Now you have to do two things. Take the phone of the person to whom you want to send the message. And then in their WhatsApp, you need to send a specific message like this one to this phone number, which is the same phone number 415-523-8826. And just type whatever is written here. So I am typing is join Vele Live. So, and then if you send it, there will be getting a recognized message here that Twilo Sandbox you are already set. That means like you can send any message to this phone number. Now it becomes like a super easy for you to, to do the rest part of things. You already have the connections. All you have to do is to go to the next level to send one time message. And to do this, you will start with like some appointment reminder. And they will give you the code. On the left hand side, you will see two things. The first one is the receiver phone number that is like two number it would be going uh, right now I put a, like a fake number so that you don't see my uh, special person's phone number and this is the default Twilio sandbox phone number and this is your message so if I just like okay love you sweetheart or whatever you want to do and then if you want to test it you can just click on this make request so I will change this number to the right one and then send this request to that number after clicking on this uh, make request, you'd be able to see like a love you sweetheart message to this uh, number goes immediately. And if you click it multiple times, every time it will send there. So you're done with the step one. You are able to send a message from this dashboard to a specific phone number. Now your goal is to run it locally on your machine. 
And to do this, make sure you click on this one, the curl, because you don't want curl. Who uses curl anyway? Go to Python. So it will be switched to the Python language and make sure you click on this mark. If you do this, it will show your auth token here and then you copy the code from here. So I'll be doing it offline so that you don't see my auth token just for the security purpose. Now go to the Visual Studio code and open the projects that you have where you had like a love your baby and paste your code here. So once you copy paste the code, it's kind of like a few lines of code where you have like the Twilio rest. That means you have a dependency of Twilio. You need to install that dependency locally to able to run it in your machine. And it has your account ID, auth token, and then the two number to the phone number that you are trying to send this. And what I will do, I will need to install the Twilio. So it's very simple. You can go to this command line. I will open this command line and then uh, pip install Twilio and if you need to put like a sudo in front of it uh, feel free to put sudo if you're windows you don't need that but I'll be use this sudo in front of it and it will install the Twilio in your machine and once this Twilio thing is done uh, which is took like a seven second and you would be able to run this from your own machine to prove it is going there I will make it like a good night sweetheart and I will make it even more romantic by dropping some emojis because these days your emotion doesn't get expressed without emojis. Now I will change this number to the number that I want to send and then hit the play button. So I already have this uh, number set. Now my goal is to play it and then see the magic happens in few seconds. And if it is uh, work correctly, you'll see good night, sweetheart, all these things. And you can send as many sweetheart and love as many times you want. So we were able to send whatsapp message from our computer to any particular number our goal is not to do it manually our eventual goal is to deploy it to a server and then run it periodically and there are multiple different ways you can do it here we will do it by using a python package called advanced python scheduler so we'll go to the website and search for advanced python scheduler and it will take to a very well used uh, library and you can use so many different things but you do like an user guide it will tell you to install app scheduler so i will do the same thing in my visual studio code uh, to run it so i will do this and it install app scheduler and it will install the scheduler in the local machine and to run it periodically you can just take some of the example from here and they have like so many different way you can run the scheduler in our case initially we will do automate this matches maybe every uh, minute or every five minutes because you are so crazy lover you need to love every single minutes so let's look for the interval and all you need to do is can you can just copy paste code from here and what we will do we will do this we'll copy it and then we will go to our visual studio code we will create another file we call it as a like a clock.py this would be a clock and then we will open this clock.py uh, inside this clock.py we will copy paste here and right now what it has it has a method here and it creates a like a scheduler and it has a certain time interval every two hour it does call this function we can't wait our emotion for two hours so we'll make it maybe and it would be maybe 10 seconds so every 10 seconds we want to call a method in our case we don't just say hello world it's not romantic and emotional we'll go our honey love and we'll create a function and we'll call it like a send love and uh, inside this function would be this message and maybe inside this function we will message the SID or something like this and we save it we come to this uh, clock function we get rid of this job uh, whatever's job our job is to make love so we will from honey love we will import send love and instead of job function our job is to send love now every 10 seconds if this runs correctly we should get a message in the whatsapp let's see whether this works or not so run this clock let's see what happens in every 10 seconds whether we get a, like a sweet love so you see like oh, it's already is coming here is uh you see like a 1148 another one is 1148 that means like you have to wait 10 seconds and when you see this uh, print command is getting output within a few seconds it's come in this message that means like you're constantly sending love to the persons this is awesome now you have to do one last thing to deploy it but you already see that you are flooding with love you are the most romantic person in the world 
So congratulations. Let's go to the next step to make it automatically in the server because your machine or your Python script will not be executing all the time. We need a server, we need a permanent solution to be the most romantic person in the world. So for this, we will go to Heroku and you can just Google Heroku and you will go to the first site uh, this is called a Horoko, this cloud application platform. This is what we are talking about. And inside Horoko, uh, you need to log in. If you don't have an account, uh, you just click on the sign up. My case, I already have an account, so I will just do the login. And once you log in, it will take you to their dashboard. Inside the dashboard, on the top hand side, you will see the new and click on this create new application and give some name. And we name it as a, like our lab automation and just create this application and this will tell what you need to do the first thing actually you have to do install the horoku cli and if you go to this link it will tell you that you need to install this uh, cli is a common line if you scroll a little bit you will see for the mac to install the cli first time you will use if you have the brew you will do this way for windows guys you can install the 32 64 or whatever the version you have and the ubuntu guys you are already smart you know what to do anyway so i will go back to the visual studio code and at the bottom i will do this brew command to install uh, Horoko cli so it's already done and i need to go back to the dashboard that i had here and you'll see all the command i need to do is here but you have to do two more things on top of it so let's do this two part and the first part would be Hiroko login if you just do Hiroko login it will take you to the website and if you ask for the permission just press any key and it will take you to the website and it will log you in and once login is done you can go back to this page uh, which is says like a, you are logged in as a, like a programming hero and whatever is your account is so this is the first part done now for the server side we need to do two things First thing we need to do is to create list of dependencies. In our case, we actually have two dependencies. We are using uh, Twilo here, and then we are using App Scheduler. So we'll create a file, it's called requirements.txt. This is a kind of a standard way. You can do touch requirements.txt, and then open the requirements.txt file. In our case, we are using Twilo, and whatever the latest version you are using, just use that version here you can check their current version when you are installing it you save it and this is important because when you are deploying these projects Huroku needs to know the external dependencies it needs to install in their server otherwise this thing will not work one last thing we will need is the proc file proc file is a file that will tell that hey Huroku, run this project by using this clock and all we need to do is to create a file and be careful when you're creating this proc file p the first letter has to be uppercase so proc file something like this enter and then you open this proc file there is no extension there's no txt or pi or anything after the proc file it's just the name and you need to type a special command clock this is telling heroku that hey this would be a clock and then the clock would be python clock dot pi now if you look into the folder we already created honey love that's automatically send the whatsapp message we created the clock pi that's schedule the message a certain interval of time and then the requirements is the dependency you have and finally you are telling Horoku, hey run this project by using whatever the rules written in this clock.py we are all done here now we are just one step away to deploying to this server and make it automatic once again we will go back to the Horoku and uh, we see in our dashboard it says like we already did the login now we just need to do from this part uh, we don't need to create a project we already created the projects so we will come to this and first thing we will do git init so we initialize a git projects for our source control purpose and then we'll go back to the website we need to set the remote so we need to copy this and set it in our machine this is the destination where the code would be going don't worry much about it now you need to the commit the changes so we need to do all three things in a row so we'll add everything we make a commit and then we'll push so we'll go back to the visual studio and git add everything that we have in the project now git commit and since you are uh, ready or crazy to make this love automation you can say it like crazy to make love automation and you do that and you did the commit all the files are added and the last thing is git push Roku master this is the master bunch you want to push and this will push all the changes and it might take like a few seconds 
looks like it's already done. Now we will go back to the Heroku website and then we also keep an eye on our mobile. Let's see what's happening over there. Our last one was 11.51 local time. Our local time is 12.09 and we are currently in the upload. So we will go to this resource. Uh, this is the resource and there is something called free dinos. That means like you want to run a clock frequently, whatever the code written on the Pi thinks. And you just have to do uh, click this one is edit. You have to turn this on and you do confirm. This means you are ready to run the clock automatically. Click on confirm and then keep an eye on this. If everything is correct, you would be able to see that message is started triggering without you doing anything on your laptop, phone or anywhere else. You see, I already got like a 1210. That means that you started making the connections. If you have a crush on anybody and you want to send a message, hey, do you want to go to a date and you want to send it like every 10 second or every one minute or every an hour to annoy that person, this is the right application for you. After a month or so, if you keep making this romantic connection, you would like to see whether everything is working correctly. You can just check like Heroku logs. If you do that, it will fetch the log and it will tell you the last thing it happened. These are the server time. So it might not match exactly in your local time. And then you will be able to see the message was sending correctly or not. So after a couple months, you got a breakup. Oh, that's heartbreaking, but it's part of the game. It's real life. Maybe you found someone smarter than that person. Like you never know. In that case, you don't want to keep sending romantic messages to your ex. So to turn this off, it's very simple. Go to this, your project and then free dinos. Click on this edit and then make this turn off. And before you confirm, you see like in every 10 second, you are sending messages to this person. And if you don't want to send anymore, just click on confirm. And after that, you would be completely disconnected from this person. That's all I wanted to share with you in this video. If you liked it, please smash on the like button, click on the subscribe and punch the bell icon. And if you want more videos like this, write a comment inside the below. I will be reading and replying every single comment and much more exciting videos is coming soon. The best.